Last year, we were warned about how disastrous COVID could be on our communities, and I'm sure our following guest has some thoughts on the matter. CEO of the National Aboriginal Community Controlled Health Organisation is with Don Paul Janky, JP. Thanks, Neraldo. Pat, thanks for your time tonight. Is this a catastrophe? Well, not quite, but it could well be. And one of the factors that compounds things like a pandemic is the overcrowded housing, which we have repeatedly asked governments throughout Australia to address and to ensure that our people have safe and the right size housing so we won't have these problems. There will be future pandemics and we must get this housing issue addressed. Well, let's talk about the Delta variant in a minute, but talk about talking about the vaccine rates. The Commonwealth made Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people a priority group back in February. Yes. Why has it taken this long, really, to ramp up the vaccination? Well, I think there's a couple of factors at play here. First was the hesitancy caused over the public commentary made about blood clots and AstraZeneca. And uh, it doesn't even matter if they change the name of AstraZeneca, which is, is apparently on the cards. People will still remember that it was AstraZeneca. And with the blood clotting, they just didn't want to have it. So, you know, they wanted to wait for Pfizer. And then we had initially, we had supply issues. But at the moment, we're not having the supply issues. So I had a phone call from the CEO at Tharawal Aboriginal uh, Health Service in Sydney. He said, look, we could do with uh, an additional... Uh, number of cases, how many? 500 per week. I rang the department, we'll fix it, we'll get onto them straight away and we'll organise the supply. Mm -hmm. It was not an issue. The department, the Commonwealth Department of Health has responded to every request that we've made for additional supply of the vaccines to go out to our archos. Mm -hmm. So out in Western New South Wales, we're working very closely with the Royal Flying Doctor Service, the Ausmat, New South Wales Health Local Districts, and um, uh, anybody you know who we can rope in. Well, now we're yeah. aware of workforce strains, and we're trying to do our best to supplement them. Are oh, the nurses? Yeah. Uh, the Royal College of Australian Nurses is the other one that we're working with for workforce, and getting that uh, supplementation in. Uh, to Western New South Wales in particular. Mm. And the, the sort of the increase in the, the amount of Pfizer that's been delivered to medical services is a good example of the pressure that you're putting on the Commonwealth in the vaccine rollout. I want to talk about the Delta strain now. So the, the Delta variant of the coronavirus is, is, seems to be targeting kids a lot more. So where are we at with the vaccine rollout to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander children? OK. So we have... Um over 194,000 Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people have received at least one dose. That's 30.7% of the population, 12 and over. So we've been vaccinating children from 12 as soon as we got the go-ahead. Mm. And, uh, and a total of 21,000 doses happened in the last week. Mm. So uh, over 103,000 of our people are now fully vaccinated. That's 16.3% of the population over the age of 12. Mm. So we want all of our kids to be vaccinated. And, in fact, I am insisting we have 100% vaccination of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people right throughout Australia before we can open up our communities. Mm. All right, last question, Pat, is we, we hear a lot of good work that the AMSs are doing around the country. They're doing the vaccine rollout, they're doing COVID testing. They're also managing the normal primary healthcare needs of our community. Are they asking for more resources? Are you lobbying yes. for more resources for them? Well, the Commonwealth has given us a, had given us a substantial amount of money to provide to our shows on a needs basis and we have responded uh, with that distribution to all the art shows to help with the communications, to get the messaging right in their areas, mm. uh, to help supplement staff or whatever other resources they need to enable them to continue to provide comprehensive primary health care plus handle everything to do with COVID. So, you know, and if we need more, we will mm. simply ask the department and I am sure that they will respond positively. Yeah. Thanks for joining us on The Point tonight, Pat. Back to you, Narelda. Thanks, JP and CEO.